good morning or good afternoon to all my friends, colleagues from the industry and audience online. I'm thrilled to be here on behalf of JSC Ingenium to exchange ideas and tackling 5G implementation and especially learn from the industry expert in this event. I would like to say thank you to MVNO Nation for organizing this event and this interesting topic. Well, the topic is about 5G and 5G is gaining momentum everywhere. If we look at the market today, there are around 160 commercial 5G network around the globe. However, most of the connections are mainly coming uh, in Asia from China, Japan and uh, South Korea. But the topic that I want to explore today in this presentation is to look at the opportunities and challenges in front of the MBNOs from technology point of view and see how they need to navigate through them to run a 5G era business and offer 5G services. We are going to focus first on three specific areas that are driving MVNOs in the 5G era. It may raise a question why we are including eSIM in the 5G topic and the answer uh, to that would be mainly related to the first, uh, the, the, the main impact of it's on MBNO business on operation. And secondly, the role of eSIM as an enabler to uh, what we call the purpose built network, whether in a form of a temporary service like a stadium or a permanent one like a private uh, industry network, which I believe this would be part of, uh, part of the discussion in the upcoming presentation I'm talking this for. So because of that, uh, Uh, I would like to focus mainly on the impact of eSIM as a driver to change to other changes in the MVNO domain. Uh, well, as we know, eSIM is one of the main elements of disruption and is going to influence the entire MVNO business and customer journey. Since eSIM is built into the device, it is evident that it will disrupt the distribution and the need for physical channels and also the personal touch in the interaction within the prospect and the service provider. But also, since each eSIM can host multiple profiles, it is going to minimize the service provider switching cost for consumers, which could be an excellent opportunity for an MVNO to grow customer base more easily and at a lower cost. But at the same time, it can be a risk of losing the customer. If the MVNO service and customer experience are not appealing enough or not up to the point, uh, up to the edge, of the technology, they will leave. So that is why the MVNO need to become more flexible, agile, and be able also to increase their margin so that they can remain competitive in such a market. Well, uh, these need uh, bring us to the second one, second area, which is cloudification. Um, a significant disruption of IT has been uh, the cloud, which is gradually replacing the legacy infrastructure and services. Basically, whatever services that we are now interacting with, they are coming from the cloud. Uh, on the other hand, the telecommunication network is also coming a long way from purpose-built equipment to network function virtualization, which decouples the software and the hardware. And now the 5G philosophy pushes the idea of virtualization even further and focuses on the importance of the cloud. Uh, the stateless microservices and service-based architectural design of the 5G core paved the path to build a cloud native core network solutions. At the core, the cloud native uh, core translates into a very agile scalable and uh, more economical MVNO deployment, especially in the case of a full MVNO. Well, it's, it's for all the industries, M MNO, private network and MVNO, but the, since the focus of this event uh, is around MVNOs, we are just elaborating more on the MVNO benefits. So if we look at the traditional approach, uh, the yellow line, uh, today, which is the solution uh, is virtualized, but we still need to think about both hardware and the software. So the MVNO should go through the process of dimensioning the infrastructure needed, especially uh, 
maybe even overdimension the resources that they need to, to weather the traffic and signaling surges. Uh, let's say, for example, if an MVNO is targeting 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year, they need to cater and dimension the resources for that amount, and also maybe even more to the extent of uh, if, uh, if the traffic goes beyond the figures they're estimating at the beginning. And on the other hand, for the uh, hardware uh, faults and problems, they need to account for uh, the uh, spur part equipment. So basically, the MVNO has to go through this uh, challenges to dimension the resources, then order the equipment, wait for the delivery installation of the hardware so that they can focus on the software implementation and integration with the host MNO to finally launch the service. While in the cloud environment, the challenge related to the infrastructure is transferred to the cloud provider, whether it's, it's in the form of infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service. And the scalability uh, is the challenge, is gonna be the challenge of the past. Uh, also, if we look at it from the uh, commercial standpoint and investment, uh, since we talked about overdimensioning the resources to cater for the number of subscribers there and the traffic that they're dimensioning by the end of the year, that means they have to invest more on the hardware that's gonna be remain unutilized for most of the time uh, till they reach the points of the uh, tr traffic and the projection of the uh, customer. And also for the equipment and the maintenance they have to spend. Uh, the, the approach on the uh, cloud side would be much more minimal, especially with the focus on the uh, uh, pay as you grow model. So if we compare the two approach, we can see the time to market and the upfront capital and operational investment that the MDNO needs to put in place in the telco cloud approach is significantly reduced. The, other major uh, benefit of the telco cloud core network is the pipeline process that automates the steps involved between developing the product and having it deployed in the production. This would mean uh, a more agile and continuous response to changes and market needs, as well as a close to zero interruption in service delivery to the end customer, whether it is in the form of a software upgrade or proactive issue resolution through automation and self healing features that the Telco cloud actually brings. So if we uh, look at, for example, the software upgrade that the experience that the MPNO has, uh, they ha we have to stop uh, the service today in order to replace the old software with a new one. Uh, and then if, everything goes successfully, continue with the service, and if not, we have to roll it back. While in the Telco cloud environment, the both old one and the new one can coexist, and the new software can gradually take over the service in full if everything is going according to the plan. Or in the case of the uh, issues with the network functions, uh, the cloud environment can orchestrate the replacement of a new function with the old one, the faulty one, in an instance, uh, in a close to zero response time. So by looking at just these three advantages, you can imagine that uh, a new MVNO entrant based purely on the cloud nat native solution will be emerging strongly. So that is why this, is, this uh, recipe should not be only for the new entrants, but also a critical transformation step that the current MVNO need to take. Finally, if, uh, if we come back to the technology, 5G technology itself, the 5G is also promising to enable multiple use cases categorized into three areas. I think we are all familiar with this triangular shape uh, that emphasize on the enhanced mobile broadband, uh, massive machine type communication and ultra reliable latency communication scenarios. Uh, well, the enhanced mobile broadband is already here. Basically, uh, we don't need to wait for a full transformation of the core to be able to offer such services. 
the transition from LTE to what we call 5G non standalone network is a straightforward path for all communication service providers, including MVNOs, uh, to tackle these kind of use cases and scenarios. However, the path to enable URLLC and MMTC use cases is not as straightforward, nor they're going to be cheap, especially when it comes to the spectrum and access network domain deployment. So the projection is that we still have two to three years of steering through the obstacles to fulfill these type of services. If we look at the standard, standard itself is still evolving. We're still waiting for release 17 to come in 2022. And on the, on the other side, the cost and challenges in uh, building the access network, the transport network, building the edge computing infrastructure is still a more significant barrier for the host MNO to enable an MBNO to offer such services. Well, 5G uh, enables new use cases through two main features. One is going to be network slicing, which basically is here to fulfill the requirement of their verticals. If we look at the network slicing, there are 37 different quality of service attributes that drive the definition of the slice. And the other one is the distributed architecture. In order to reduce the latency that we need for URLC use cases and requirements, we need to get closer and closer to the end user. That would mean deployments of part of the core network in the edge cloud or what is uh, we call it, or we know as, uh, is known as MEC, that is deployed close to the access network. So, however, for an MVNO to achieve an end-to-end -end service, whether utilizing these two features, whether it's network slicing, end-to-end -end network slicing, or deployments of the distributed architecture through MEC, the relationship between the MVNO and the host MNO and their commercial agreement must be reviewed because a prominent part of the delivery is on the MNO side. So until the MNO is not ready to deliver the services, uh, the MVNO cannot. Finally, the last feature of 5G that uh, we need to look at uh, is the evolution of the voice. Uh, I don't have much to say here because it's all gonna be on IMS. So while the movements to adapt voice over LTE has been a little bit slow, especially in the MNO market, with 5G, this evolution is inevitable and we need to, we will take place very soon because as we are going to see, the push to reduce the number of connection over 2G and 3G network in order to reutilize the spectrum for 4G and 5G domain is gonna happen. So the MVNO need to start tackling it uh, and, and, and think about deploying the IMS network as soon as possible. So to, to summarize and also to answer the question of how do we see MVNO journey toward 5G, especially in the next two years, we have identified uh, seven evolution domains for an MVNO to build the capabilities needed to compete in the future market. First and foremost is a transition to the cloud native solution, whether they are deployed in the public or private or even a virtual environment, the MVNO must take this path uh, because of all the benefits that we saw from the business perspective and also the operational part. The evolution of the data with the immediate transition towards 5G non standalone, if the host MNO is also ready for that, is the second step that the MVNO can take. Getting ready for voice evolution by implementing Volti and IMS. We have talked about this. And if your MVNO focuses on massive IoT use cases, one immediate path here would be to offer MB IoT and LTM services, as these solutions would be with us for the next decade alongside the 5G as the 5G is gonna cover it. But still MBIOT LTM has also have a huge dependency on the MNO side. We didn't uh, go through the B2B domain and business domain. Uh, and I believe the rest of the events, uh, the expert will go through this more deeply, but to just briefly 
a review at the MPNO uh, in the 5G era should get ready for B2B an enterprise offering and purpose-built operation. So in this as, uh, aspect, uh, we, uh, they need to acquire uh, multiple capabilities. This would include multi-tenancy and slicing capability, uh, the possibility to build enterprises and also partners, so a multi-dimensional billing aspect, and also to be able to expose API for the third party to manage their own services. Basically, uh, the concept of uh, multi-sided telco or two-sided business model is not something new. It has been in the market for the last uh, six or seven years, I think. Uh, but in the MBNO domain, we haven't saw much of a movement in that direction. So most of the MBNOs were focusing mainly uh, on their relationship and the business side, uh, business aspect on the consumer side. But with, with in the 5G era, it, these way of this mentality and this approach toward the business has to change. Six uh, pillars and the domain of the evolution as we touch on, on at the beginning of the presentation is the aptitude of ECMA and know your customer is clear. And this is an evolution path that the MBNO has to take. Uh, and last but not least, the MBNO should, I think in the next, this year and the, uh, the next two years, basically, they need to start opening the discussion with the host MNO and even the regulatory, depending on the market that they are competing in. Uh, to explore the extension of the contract to cover 5G roaming and to end network slicing and the use of MEC. But digging deeper into this model would require a more interactive forum and conversation. Uh, so just about us, we are uh, JSC and Genio with 25 years of in-house R&D and many accomplishment, accom accomplishments are enabling MBNOs, MNOs, and non-telco industries by delivering mobile core, BAS, and business support system solution. Today, our solution consists of a full-fledged cloud native and converged mobile core and IMS network that could integrate with any wireless access technology that would include 2G, 3G, LTE, 5G standalone and non-standalone, Wi-Fi, and even lower band as well as a business support system solution that is packed with next, next generation features like eSIM, digital identity verification, lead, retail and partner billing, and web and mobile self, self care application for both enterprises and the individual customer. So if you are looking for a solution or a partner to start your own MBNO business, or if you are a well-established MBNO and evaluating your approach to tackle 5G, whether directly to the 5G standalone core or through the model that we were discussing, we would like to hear from you and see how JUC Ingenium can help you in achieving your business objectives. With this, I would like to thank you all on behalf of JUC Ingenium for taking the time to attend this event, and I sincerely hope you found this presentation informative. Thank you.